different null errors are one of the most common errors out there. This will happen when you take a variable that is not initialized or set to null and you try to do something with that variable. So for example, this is something you could do without null safety. You could create a list of integers and pass one and also null as values. And then when we loop through that list, we want to increment that value. Now in this case, you have probably already spotted it. And that is that we cannot increment a null value. Null safety is a language feature that tries to prevent this. For example, if you want a variable to be able to be nullable, you have to add the exclamation mark. And that way we will get a compile warning on the item as well. Which means that we have non-nullability by default. Now what we'll do is take an old project that I already have written in Flutter and just migrated it to using null safety. Just be aware that it's not recommended yet to migrate Flutter projects. It's recommended to try to migrate packages. But this should give you a good insider look on how it will actually work when null safety is released. Now I recommend a migration guide for when you actually want to migrate. But this should give you a good overview. Now before we start with the migration, we have to understand a couple of things first. We have two new operators and one new keyword. Let's start with the two operators first. The question mark or the nullable operator just indicates that a variable can be null. So for example, if you have a string and then a question mark on it, that means that this value can either be a string or a null. Moving over to the explanation mark or the bang operator, this will force cast the type or the nullable type to the non-nullable type, meaning it will go from string of question mark to string. Now be aware that this should only be used if you know that that value is not null. For the modifier, we have the keyword late, which lets you initialize the variable later with a non-nullable type. And you will see an example of this in the code later on. Now, when we have gotten that out of the way, let's look into how we can do the actual migration. So here we have the code and this whole application is actually used maintained in the main.dart file just to make everything a bit more simpler. So the first thing we'll have to do is actually go to the pubswick yaml file and bump the dependency on the SDK of dart. So null safety is on 2.12 and as there is no stable release we will have 0-0. Now as you can see the main.dart file is now red. And that's because we just haven't migrated yet. One thing you will have to do before you even start migration is to actually check if all of your packages are migrated. As this is not dependent on any packages, we can just go ahead with the migration. So these are the kind of errors that you will see. So here you will see a couple of common cases, such as the key, and then also the parameters that we pass to this widget. We also have a case of the animation controller, and if we scroll down, we can also see that we have a problem with the navigator. So now we want to go ahead with the actual migration and we have two options. Either we do it manually or we do it with the migration tool. So to fire up the migration tool, you will write dart migrate and it will look through and analyze the project to give you a URL back. Now for me, I actually get a warning or an error saying that I have to lower the SDK constraints. So we will do use that. We'll go back to the pubswick yaml file and just lower the dependency for the SDK to 2.11. Now if we run the migrate tool once again, we should see that it actually succeeds. And now when this one is actually done, we'll get access to one of those URLs. So this URL, you can just copy and paste into the browser. As the migration tool is not really responsive, I couldn't zoom more than this. But here you can see our different files. We have the main.dart and as well as the widget test file. Now where you see all of these empty spaces, it just means that this doesn't need to have a nullable value. So it will just leave it as is. So if we scroll down a bit, we can see that we have our homepage. And now we can already see that it has added a explanation mark at the key. And this is actually correct because we don't always want to be able to pass a key it's actually a optional parameter. So as that one is good, we will go ahead and navigate down. And we can see right away that our title as well as our own priest has added these explanation marks. 
So in a lot of cases, the migration tool will do a great job, but this is a case where we don't actually want them to be nullable. The reason for this is because if we scroll up, we can see that we always pass a title as well as the method called update title. So there is no real benefit of having these nullables. So we will actually go ahead and make these non-nullables later on. If we scroll down, we can actually see the code later on what the nullability actually means. Because as this title is nullable, we can see that it has added a explanation mark, meaning that it will actually crash if we do not pass a correct title. And that is actually not what we want. So now just to show how we can actually migrate this to be non-nullable, we can add this explanation mark hint. This will mark it for the migration tool that this will be a non-nullable value. So if we press the button rerun from sources, we can see that it adds a red line here, as well as a keyword called required. Now the required keyword is kind of self-explanatory. It will just force it that we have to pass a title. So now if we scroll down, we can also see that the title or the widget.title actually doesn't have that bang or explanation mark operator anymore. Now this means that the required keyword will be added and the explanation mark will be removed from the string title. We're going to go ahead and do the same with the void callback as we don't want that to be nullable as well. Now we have made this both non-nullable meaning that when we apply the migration tool, we will have these required keywords as well as no explanation marks on the title and on pressed. We will see later on how this works. Now, depending on how big changes you actually do, you may want to do different commits just to save some work. Moving on, here we can see that we have a late keyword. And this late keyword actually says to the compiler that this animation controller will be assigned later on and we are sure of it. And as it actually is, because if we check in the init state, we take that animation controller and assign it to a new animation controller. Now this change is fine, because we don't actually want this animation controller to be nullable. Now if we scroll down, we actually have one more thing to cover. And it has added a bang operator or the explanation mark, because the navigator state is actually nullable. So just to see this, if we click the dot off, we can see in the Flutter SDK that they have made the navigator state to nullable. Now navigating back, this is a case where I don't want to give specifics on how you should do it because this could be changed later on. But as of now, we are sure that we have a navigator as that comes with the material app. So in this case, we will just keep the bang operator. So now when we are done with the migration, we can just hit the apply migration tool and we are done with the migration. Now navigating back to the actual code, we can see that all of these changes are actually applied. These values are now non-nullable and we have the required keyword. And then if we go back to the my homepage and we try to pass null in the title, we can see that that actually gives a compile warning. We can also see that we have the late keyword for the animation controller. And if we remove that late keyword, we can see that it doesn't know that it will be initializing later on. So of course we keep that instead of making that value actually nullable. Now scrolling down to the actual build method where we had a couple of other errors. We can see that the title doesn't have any error as well as we have the bang operator on the navigator now. And that's actually all we have to do to migrate this Flutter application. So as you can see, when we actually migrated this to a null safe Flutter application, we actually spotted some cases where we could have errors and we got compiler warnings and fixed that. If this video was helpful, make sure to check out Patreon where you can support me on making more of these videos. Every week I actually post videos beforehand there before I post it on YouTube. And of course, like and subscribe. Make sure to check out the website to sign up for the newsletter. So when I actually release the course, everybody through my newsletter will know about it first. Now if you don't want to do any of that, make sure to check out one of my other videos coming up on the screen right now. And I will see you in the next one.